Welcome back after the break. So we just discussed question 3.5 and we looked at the man-made features at J and K and we saw that J is a symmetry and K is a carrier and park. So let's continue to our next question. Identify any two primary economic activities being practiced in close proximity to Messina. You must also provide a block reference number. So once you identify the primary activity, you need to give me the grid reference of it, the block reference. So you need to tell me, okay, you see mining taking place, it's in block B1 or it's in C1 or else you're only going to receive half a marks. Now, what is a primary economic activity? It's mainly farming, fishing, forestry, or yes, like forestry, a crop farming. So it's any one of those. Now, let's quickly have a look at the different types of primary economic activities that we can find on the Messina map. Now, the first one that I've identified is an H Okay, if you look at H123, what do we see over here? We see diggings over there, and they've written Messina Copper Mines. And it's in block H3. So let's go and write in there, in block H3, we have identified Copper Mining. Okay, now the second type of primary activity that I have identified is in block. Let's have a look. G3. Now, as you can see, in block G3, there's block G1, 2, 3. I see cultivated land. So that's farming taking place over there. Remember to use the reference. And block G3, we have cultivation taking place. And then we have identified another primary activity. And that's in block I4. Let's quickly go to block I4. FGH 1234. And as you can see, have a look over there. What have we identified here? Fishing. There's a fish farm taking place. So in I4, we got fish farming taking place. And then another primary activity that I've ident identified is in QG3, quarrying. If you look over there, you can see, look at the reference over there. Now, if you look at the reference that's being indicated over there, and you go down to your references, you can see excavations taking place and the mining taking place over there. So we've mentioned it's in G3 as well. Quarrying. And then I've identified another one in block G1. And let's quickly go and have a look. In block G1, we have some forestry taking place. So you could have mentioned any two. Okay, so our next question. Give evidence from the topographical map that there are groundwater so sources close to the Earth's surface in the mapped area. 
Now, the reason why we see it is because this mini groundwater is when we utilize water that's beneath the surface of the earth. And if you look at the map of Messina, you see many recreational areas and you see many wind pumps. If you look at the recreational areas in and around Messina, it's because there's many fountains for, found at these recreational areas, as well as if you look at the amount of perennial waters that's being found over here. So we can definitely see that it's a high drainage area. Density is quite high in the area. So we could have mentioned any of the following. There's quite a lot of fountains being found on it. There's many wind pumps that's been utilized to extract with groundwater to the surface. And lastly, we can also men mention there's a high drainage density. There's many surface runoff. You can see many rivers with its tributaries on the map of Messina. Okay. By using evidence from the topographical map, explain the occurrence of housing clusters in block J2. Now let's quickly go and have a look at block J2. Now as you can see, look at the clustering of the houses in block J2. Now why do you think the reason the people are clustered together? Now if you look at the surrounding areas, you see quite a lot of industries close by. So we can make, the reason why these residences are cl clustered together is because probably housing for factory workers in the surrounding areas. Another reason that we can mention over there, it's close to the factory. It's close to the factory. And because it's close to the factory, what happens? They can save on transport, transport cost. So instead of traveling a great distance between the town of Messina and to the factories on the outskirts, these small clusters are being built by the factory themselves, so it makes it much more convenient for the workers to travel to work and back. Okay, now our next question is regarding GIS. Now if you look at GIS, Geographical Information System, the first question, name any two components of GIS. Now we looked at, it's basically software, hardware, it's people working with computers and programs. And if you want to name any two components of GIS, we can mention hardware, software, data that we collect, like statistical analysis. We need people to do the surveys. And we use networks. Okay, now identify a polygon feature and a line feature and a point feature respectively in G3. Now let's just quickly go to G3. A polygon feature in G3 will definitely be the cultivated land that we see over there, the sewage disposal, because look at the shape, the symmetry, even the mine dam situated over there. And if you look at the line feature, we can look at the non perennial river, we can look at the road, and we can look at the track and hiking trail. Point features will be the fountain over there, because look at the point over there, there's a couple of them, 
and the trees round in shape. So let's quickly go and write them down. So a polygon feature is the cultivated land. You've mentioned the symmetry and the mine dump. A line feature, it looks like a line, is the non perennial river. The road and the railway line. And lastly, the point feature that we've identified was the fountain and the trees that we've seen in G3. Unfortunately, this is all we have time for. I hope you've learned something today and I hope you enjoy the lesson. Until the next time, cheers.